this is the quality team and these are the five people and that's their responsibility and then it's just hard for this team it's just a struggle if it's not understood as an organizational responsibility Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to the next episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers, and uh, we have just cracked episode 150. 150 was released uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and so it's very exciting to have gotten to this point. Uh, so many different practitioners uh, and process experts that are living and breathing this day in and day out within their organisation. Um, so there's been uh, lots of value across all of the different episodes um, that we've been able to discuss. Um, if you have been following along for some time, then a rating or a review would mean a lot to us. Uh, it's going to help us uh, promote the BPM message that we're uh, that we're encouraging and promoting. Um, um, so a rating and review on any of the different platforms that you're listening on um, would be appreciated. Um, and in today's conversation, uh, very excited for this one. I have the absolute pleasure of sitting down with Michael Dakesell. Uh, now, Michael is uh, the Director of business, uh, business Integration and Improvement at a department in the public sector here in Australia, um, has lots of experience in um embedding uh, this business process management approach across an organization, driving that buy-in across all different levels of an organization. So very excited for this conversation. Michael, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Daniel. I'm very excited to be here. And as you said, uh, the community of like-minded people, it's it's just great to share experiences, learn from other people. Um, I'm doing this a lot here in my current role. I worked in this... Um, environment for 23 years in the private sector and then for the last five years in the public sector also taking a lot of private mindset in the public sector um, it's very intriguing challenging sometimes a bit frustrating uh, but it provides a new learning environment a new environment to apply those uh, those principles this mindset and learn as we go and share as we go and so there are so many things to be learned and shared and that helped me along the way and i'm happy to to give back on that that's great and, and i'm sure you would have seen um many different approaches to business process management or maybe maybe approaches is the wrong word uh, different sort of levels of success when implementing bpm um, how would you define effective bpm and what role would you say it plays in achieving organizational goals yeah um it's a tricky one because uh, BPM, uh, you can mandate it, you can volunteer it. Uh, uh, it has to provide value to the organization. I think that's a key point for an effective uh, business process mechanism. And with that, it has to be an organizational responsibility. Uh, like often I see it that, oh yeah, this is the quality team and these are the five people and that's their responsibility. And then it's just hard for this team. It's just a struggle if it's not understood as an organizational responsibility. Um, the quality team or the business process team, they can facilitate, they can educate, they can help people, they can coach people, but they cannot live or drive an efficient business process management framework. Um, they have to be this capability across the organization. Uh, we are using here process champions because we are a team of nine people in an environment of more than 5,000 uh, employees in this organization. So, so we are facilitating, we are administrating uh, this framework uh, along with process, process improvement, uh, but helping people to see what value process documentation and managing a process can provide to the organization. And a lot of people, especially here in the public sector, is maybe not very well known for process documentation. And when I started five years ago in a different area of the public sector, and I was asked, oh, where are your processes? Yeah, somewhere here. And oh, he knows something. And oh, you should talk to him. I said, no, 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 I want to see your process document. And then, yeah, no, not very much. But then when you explain to people why it is a good thing and what are the values and you, you open the door for them. My experience is a lot of people 
go very willingly through this door and say, I know what I missed now. I, I know what was missing in our approach and especially in, in, in the public sector, in, in customer facing roles where people, uh, interact with customers on a daily basis and a high transactional basis and I say well I know I know the process I can educate the next employee a new employee who's joining the team 80% is there through this business process management model you can't learn everything through a process document but you can get 80% and the other 20% you learn on the job but if you don't have it documented you just hand something over by hearsay and the person is doing his own interpretation and then his own application and then you get such a wide variation of executing certain processes and you think as a manager everybody knows what they are doing but then you realize everybody does it slightly different and then it creates all kinds of problem in terms of the outcome achieved in terms of even how the users or to some extent the public notices that and place the system so so it has to be organizational responsibility it has to have those multipliers those process champions uh, which are advocates across the organization uh, to help making uh, this framework reality that's great that's really good and i think the education part is is so key and, and something so important for us as process practitioners to understand that um you know we we may be in a core team of five or ten or however many people but we need that skill to be able to communicate and promote um what we're doing um across the organization because it does impact everyone from your senior leadership down yep. to your operational employees everyone's um involved in a process in in some way shape or form and so to be, being able to educate and communicate um why it's important for them to want to participate and be involved um i think that's that's so important and and i think something that um you know a, a lot of people um struggle to do um yep. and so you it's very difficult to um, wind back time when when you you've got senior leaders or or other you know operational employees that are resisting um, whatever you're trying to do you, you're trying to change my job you're trying to ch- take my job away you, you don't we 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 um don't need that resistance you know we we, we want to try and help bring people along for that journey as easy as possible um, but what what strategies have you found to be most effective in promoting BPM across an entire organisation and why. Um. What we are doing here is uh, we're going in both ways. We're going top down as well as bottom up. Uh, you have to have both and they will meet somewhere in the middle. And then depending where they meet, it, it determines how successful or how fast you can drive. Um, I, I feel uh, over the last five years that the top down um, is maybe a little bit hesitant. Uh, the bottom up uh, it can be very furious at times. The, where people realize, oh yeah, that is working really well for me. Oh, and that helps me doing my role. Oh, that helps me form my team to form to perform better, to form in a more standardized way, and and achieve a better performance overall. So we can see those pockets uh, within the organization from the top uh, from, from sorry from the bottom up. Um, getting excited, uh, growing, uh, utilizing it, um, but then getting to a ceiling very soon. And then we have to make sure that top-down approach is coming too, that our leadership understands why we are doing this, why we are asking employees to invest a certain amount of time in doing those activities, in having this mindset, in having this, this practice of documenting process and maintaining them. Now, not documenting and forget, but documenting, maintaining them, checking them in six months and saying, did we change anything? Did we learn anything? Did we get feedback? How did we utilize this feedback? How can we be organically better? So as soon as you do both of them, uh, for me, it works pretty well. And that uh, those strategies combined uh, help us to evolve. The other very conscious decision we made when we started implementing that uh, we are not mandating it uh, mandating means um, we, we can't admi- administer that uh, we are want to go to those people who see the value who are happy to take our coaching our leadership approach 
and evolve uh, it is in their environment uh, rather than on knocking on all the doors and getting worn out by some areas they'll get to this eventually uh, there are some areas we, which said initially no nah, that's not for us and then we used some very high profile examples like recruitment process or procurement process like like um, corporate services processes which are having a, a very high visibility to people on all levels. And then you show them, oh, look, if you click on this link, you can see the process, you can see what document you need, you can see what template is available. It's always the current one because it's it's an it's a life link in, into the organization. And people say, oh, 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 that's pretty cool. Oh, actually now, uh, come back. Uh, let, let's talk about this again. I might have an area in my in my organization where I could use this too, and I would like to use this. And then you start creating a little bit of, FOMO. So, uh, <laughs> but 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 if you bang on the doors initially and they, they say, well, no, not for me, uh, we just leave them for the moment. And we go to those people who see the value, who are willing uh, to use this competency and this capability, and then eventually go to those who experience it in practice and then realize, you know what, uh, that there might be something to it. So. So we're not forcing it, we are growing it organically and that seems to work very well. That's great. And when you are communicating to the senior leadership, so from the top down, um, do you have, uh, have you crafted like a um, a very sort of set message um, across the board or do, are you changing your messaging and your communication depending on um, which area um, they're responsible for? Yeah, we, we 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 had this discussion. We talked about that on how to best do it. Because to be frank, if you go to leadership and you talk about business process management, it's not really sexy. It's not really what what people make uh, stop in their tracks and thinking and say, oh, there might be something to it. Uh, we realized this rather quickly. Um, and you might have seen this yourself before. Uh, so what we do is um, the core competency of my of my function is to drive continuous improvement uh, so you could see as as an internal process improvement consultancy which is available across the department now that i can package this in a sexy way i can package this in a way that people stop and say interesting there's somebody here who is offering me help uh, to make things simpler possibly safer faster more employee friendly why would i not take this help uh, so so we use this to to open the door and then we say oh and by the way any process we are touching any process we are improving we are looking at we make sure that at the end of the day this process is in our business process management repository uh, and then oh what is that and then we show them an example we show them this and said oh yeah okay interesting uh, some people might think oh yeah right there's more to it some people realize it once we deliver and think oh this is actually cool now I have a a documented process I have transparency I can see roles and responsibilities I can see oh they are doing this and oh they are doing that and then it start to click and you get more mind share for that approach than while just going in and saying, hey, you know what, you need to do business process management. Yeah. Yeah, great. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think um, there are many organizations and, and many senior leaders that have um have, have a preconception, a preconceived idea around what business process uh, actually means and, and what it looks like. But oftentimes it's coming from maybe a poor implementation or a poor adoption of it. Um, and so, you know, you, you've got, um, I've heard it said that, you know, we don't, we don't do processes here or we don't have processes <laughs> here. We're not doing that. <laughs> and um, which is quite strange, but I think it, it goes to show that, you um, our language is so important and we need to understand who we are talking to and um, are there any trigger words that we shouldn't be using and are there any trigger words that we should be using because it, it means a lot to the person we're, we're talking to. But um, To talk about trigger words, it's just to, to comment on that, like and when we started doing this, uh, we used the term Six Sigma uh, because that's all my team are Six Sigma certified at different levels uh, and we are, we are teaching this capability we learned very quickly then the work Six Sigma in government is not, people cannot relate to it or 
relate to it and say, no, 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 that's production environment, that's manufacturing, we don't do this here. So, so yeah, you're perfectly right. Uh, language is it's very important and you have to make sure you use the right language for the right audience. So you just can't use a framework as is from my private background. You have to think about what resonates, what doesn't resonate. Uh, like efficiency, yes, it resonates, but uh, reducing your risk resonates even more. So, so you have to find those right triggers uh, to open those doors and to to uh, create this mind share for this capability mm-hmm. it's it's almost like we all all have to have a little bit of um sales technique or skill <laughs> <laughs> um but apart from uh communication and and the language that we're using what other challenges have you faced in implementing an effective bpm approach or practice across an organization and and how do you overcome those challenges well, I think one challenge we are facing, and um, I, I'm still looking for help on how to overcome it and for ideas, uh, it's a sustainability point. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going in with, with projects, we're doing projects, so we're, we're delivering improvements, and part of that we are documenting the process and then handing it over back to the process owner. Uh, it can't own, it's kind of ownership doesn't sit with us, it sits with the business, it has to sit with the business. They have to stake in the process, they own the process. Uh, there is typically excitement about improvement, there's excitement about, oh great, we have it now documented. And there's a certain risk that um, it's then forgotten, or at least the documentation part is forgotten after a while or the person is leaving it's not handing over the process ownership to the to the next person so so sustainability and maintaining processes looking at a process six months later to see is it still the same thing did we change something did we learn something that is still a challenge and that's something we are uh we are looking for solutions we are uh, the stick doesn't work too well, uh, so our, we have our tool infrastructure. The tool tells us this process was not reviewed in the last six months. Uh, you ping the process owner. Uh, the process owner may or may not respond to that So because it might not have vested interest. Oh, yeah, this was important six months ago when I did the improvement, improvement but it's not important at the moment. So, so for us, it's a little bit... Um, for us, we think, well, just reviewing it, it takes you 10 minutes. Uh, if there was a change, it takes you maybe a little bit more to update it, but that's value-add activity. Uh, but having this mindset for people not to put it too far away and not to forget about it, that is still a struggle and we're still looking for efficient ways on how to overcome that and how to how to put it not at the top of the priority list. That's not realistic, but not it should be on the priority list somewhere. It should not drop from the priority list. And that's still a challenge for us. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's a challenge for a lot of organizations that uh, I'm aware of at least. And I think, um, you know, s- some of the uh, approaches that I'm aware of that, you know, people, organizations trying to tackle this um, challenge of how do we, um, and, and you mentioned it, it's, it's mindset. It's a mindset. Like you can't just, um, uh, tell someone once that, oh, here's your process and you need to, um, you need to manage it and update it. It's, it needs to be drilled into them, um, until it becomes part of how they work, part of how they collaborate, part of their sort of ongoing, um, you know, um, what, what they're responsible for. Um, I heard one, one example. It was, um, another sort of department in government um were they they'd set up like a community of practice um to try and tackle this challenge um to try and help bring people from all departments all areas of the all areas of the business um in for like a monthly uh, meeting where they could uh, help promote the work that's being done so they might have someone from hr or someone from finance talk about you know, this is my one of the processes I'm responsible for. This is what we did. This was the benefits. This is what's possible, um, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And then, you know, a Q&A or a discussion afterwards. But that's one one approach I've seen is trying to bring together the, the wider the business. Anyone that's interested, as you said, you're trying to find those champions. Not You're not trying to force it down people's throats. But um, And then the other thing I've, I've, I was aware of is... Um, 
uh, one organization that had a, a very much a bit a, a process management centric approach. Um, it was right from the top down. It was in their KPIs. Mm-hmm. It was in their measures. It was that's what they were getting measured measured on. And so I think when when that's part of your performance yep. indicator, then you it's going to <clears throat> jump up that priority list for you. Um, and so I think that worked really well for that organization. But um, obviously, it's not just none of those are a magic bullet. Um, but it's doing a little bit of um, a few of them and, and seeing what, yeah. what works best for the organization and, and for where they're at. Yeah. Um, uh, performance indicator is a good idea under something we are we are not there yet. We are not mature enough, but it's definitely in the discussion. And I think once we, and maybe we just trial it with a few functions, which are doing it anyway, which, which would say, yeah, it makes sense. That should be in my performance because I'm doing that. So it, it's mm-hmm. not, it's just acknowledging that I'm doing this already. Uh, maybe starting this in some areas and then um, extend it from there might be a way to go. Mm, yeah, that's great. <clears throat> and, and how would you go about um building a culture of continuous improvement across an entire organization. I guess it kind of ties into what we've just been talking about um, in terms of driving and motivating this. Um, How do you get an organization to adopt this mindset of we need to continuously improve? Well, that was a question I asked myself five years ago when I joined this this public space because I was that was basically I was asked to do, can you help us implement a, a culture of continuous improvement. So I am and at that point uh, joining the public space. I realized um, from a private sector where it's all the mature, level of maturity is very high. It's very efficiency driven. It's profit margin driven, protecting profit margin driven efficiency through process is helping on that. Uh, how to translate this into a public sector. So very passionate about that. Um, so what what we ended up doing is it was a bit of learning over the first two years and then implemented over the last three years. Um, I realized very quickly this capability doesn't exist uh, or only in, in very small pockets, only in individuals, but those individuals then get frustrated because nobody else does it. Uh, so what we started doing is doing improvement projects with people in the organization. Um, We very consciously framed it with the business, not to the business. We can't do something to you. We can do it with you. We can create this uh, Six Sigma, which we we don't use the term anymore, uh, the process improvement capability to your team, but we need your team. We need the process expertise from your team uh, to help you understand what is the current process, where are the pain points, how can we solve those pain points, how do we design a future process, how do we implement that. Uh, so, so we're doing it with the business and this way we are a showcasing improvement, but also educate and encourage people on this capability. Uh, so that is one thing we are doing. It's a very slow way, which we realized very quickly because there's only so many projects you can do. And like in every project, you have maybe five to 10 people who are actively involved and exposed to the methodology. So the second thing we said is, okay, that works, but it's really pretty slow and some people catch on, some people don't catch on. Uh, so the second work stream we put in place is a capability uplift uh, work stream. Uh, so we are now running a, a management essentials training to say what is continuous improvement, what is business process management uh, to uh, to uh, to address the, the top-down approach, um, but also a one-day fundamentals of process improvement and a four-day program, which we are calling Green Belt Six Sigma because this, these are more the the notes if you want uh, so where we are in this four-day program we we are having a support from an external vendor to help us with the content but then those people have to deliver their own improvement project receiving mentoring and coaching from my team so this way we we i have those the training covering with about 680 people went through fundamentals and it's really create this language, create a narrative, encourage people to think about 
why are we doing this this way? Is there a different way to do that? Encourage people to challenge the status quo, to be allowed to challenge the status quo. It's not a bad thing. It, it's a good thing. And something might come out of it. Something might not. There might nothing come out of it. But you ask the question. And you have need to get an, a fair answer. Oh, we're doing this because of this and this and this business requirements. Or, oh, we're doing this because we always did this. No, that's not a good enough answer. Let, let, let's take it a bit deeper. Maybe we don't have to do this anymore. Maybe we can simplify the process. Maybe we can standardize the process. Maybe we can automate certain steps of the process. So just creating this language and creating the mindset um, that, yes, we can ask those questions. And, yes, it's a, it's an okay question to ask and it's a great question to challenge a process. It's not a bad thing. Um, so that that's that was significant. There was a, sig a significant way for us to to go from niche pockets of showcasing, of doing work, to reach a lot more people with this mindset, with this capability, with this thinking. Um, the third thing we did, and um, that's more the, the fun part, uh, we created this community of practice. Uh, there are now, um, I think it's over, over 700 people. We are an organization of 5,000 people. There are now 700 people in this community of practice. There are people from other departments hearing about us and saying, hey, I heard about this. And we say, yes, you can join it. it it's, it's, we are meeting every, every roughly four weeks. There's no set agenda or sequence. We have a speaker coming. It could be a speaker internally, a deputy secretary. It could be somebody just driving a continuous improvement framework. Uh, it could be an external speaker giving a different perspective. We had somebody talking about psychological safety. That was so amazing. Like just different perspectives. If you, if you create this mindset, if you create this safe space for people, there's a lot more inputs coming for improvement. So a lot of different facets and aspects of continuous improvement. And the, the purpose is A, to bring people together to showcase you're not alone. There are more people and you can have this discussion, but also to remind them you went through this training, you have the skill to some extent, uh, add on to the skill, different thoughts, different ideas, and allow them to express their thoughts, express their thinking, and uh, make sure this is not falling back and gets dormant, but bring it up every time, bring it up every time, bring it up, and then uh, it will catch on and they will use it. And then it's very encouraging to see when we have a new, we have a pipeline process where requests are for help are coming to us. We are prioritizing, we are assigning a lead from the team and the lead goes in, um, the project team is forming and then you oh, four people from the project team have been to to the fundamentals of process improvement makes it so much easier. They have seen uh, a tool, how it could work, and now they see the tool, how it really works, like a fishbone diagram, root cause diagram, or, or, or stakeholder management, stakeholder impact analysis. They can see how the tool really works. They have a much better understanding, and they're most likely to use it in one way, and maybe in a small way, in a different way, in their own environment. So, so those three levels um, make up our continuous improvement strategy. How do we create, how do we sustain uh, this culture of continuous improvement? So, you know, you can, you can, yeah, I, can, I could talk about this for a long time. It's, it's very, I'm very proud of what we have achieved over the last three years. And uh, it is really a thing now at the department. We, we are, not where, not where we want to be. There's certain levels like the business process management model is not at a level of maturity where I would like it to be. Um, but compared to three years ago, we are, we know we are on a good path. Mm, yeah, that's fantastic. And I love what, love what you said there about it's okay to challenge a process. I think um, that's such an important uh, culture um to breed across an organization is you know it's it's okay to um look at what you're doing as an op operational employee and to recognize that this could be improved or this could be done in a better way um because uh you know as a team of nine for an organization of five thousand like you, you can only imagine how many processes there are and 
and um, and and you simply can't be in all places at the same time. You, you, we need to be able to leverage um, all people across the organisation because they're in the best position to understand. Well, you know, th- this this part of the process isn't working as it should be, or as, as well as it could be. Yeah. Um, or we're we're recognising that we're getting complaints uh, from customers about this particular experience. Um, how can we improve this? You know, and and I guess it's. Um, by having that core team to support the business and support those that really do have an appetite and have bought into yep. it, that's probably the easiest way to get started as opposed to trying to um, push something uphill that really they're, they're, they don't have an interest or an appetite or they don't think they need it right now. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning we talked about um effective ppm and i said it's an organizational responsibility and and that's that's kind of how we get to this yes you start with nine people but you know you can't stop there you, what are the ways to make it an organizational responsibility so if you use those those methods or those those tools those those this framework and it, it might look different for every organization but for us it it works very well. I'm pretty sure there might be variations of that around. Um, but having those different levels of engagement, of, of capability development, uh, helps it making an organizational responsibility. And then you have to pair it with your bottom-up activities and with your top-down activities. And and this way you are on a good track. Is it a perfect track? I don't know. Could there be a faster way? maybe uh so far i'm happy how it's working yeah that's fantastic and and how do you balance the need for standardizing processes across an organization with the need for um flexibility and agility um i think that's something that's come up um before where this idea of capturing and documenting processes and and putting governance around it so ownership and responsibility um for some people feels like it's red tape and maybe it's slowing things down and it's making things uh, less flexible. But um, how do you balance both of those to being wanting to standardize, but keep that flexibility and agility there? Yeah. Um, that is for us at the moment an easy one, I would say, um, because there's a lot more desire to standardize uh, to standardize and then on the back of that to automate uh, to automate certain activities um, we are um, we have embarked the automation uh, pass about a year ago and uh, that uh, that also helped us uh, to get more excitement uh, so we're doing RPA we're using RPA technologies to automate certain uh, I would say non-value add activities, uh, very uh, transactional activities. Uh, but from that perspective, there's a lot of more desire to standardize. Um, I think at some point uh, the coin will flip, as you say, and people will say, "Ooh, if you're going too far, we standardize. We are using flexibility." So, so we have certain areas where we had uh, those issues before, and we are using variation models in our BPM tools. So, so that's okay. We can do that. Um, but at the moment, there's uh, a lot more desire to standardize. So we don't see this issue. But uh, as you mentioned, that might be more a matter of time. Uh, at some point, uh, we might uh, be at a level of standardization where people say, oh, it's now... Uh, in our way or it's now too standardized and we, we need a bit more flexibility but uh, I think we're quite a while to go until we reach that point. Yeah, no, great. Um, and um, with uh, in the Process Pioneers podcast, we have um, quite a uh, large audience and quite a diverse audience that kind of tune in and listen to these episodes and um, they'll be coming from all different levels of an organisation and across different industries and sectors and be facing different challenges. But I'm sure that um, in our conversation today, you've um, piqued uh, the interest of our audience um, or, or at least a, a, a portion of the audience uh, to want to explore BPM further. Um, maybe they're already doing a little bit um, in their organisation. Um, maybe they haven't even started thinking about it, or maybe it's something they're still exploring at the moment. Um, what advice would you give to these people um, that are in organisations that are just starting to think about establishing effective BPM uh, practices across their organisation? It's a very good question because 
it is very daunting. Uh, if if you want to, you, you know where you want to go. You know how big the task is. You know how many people need to get on board. So, so it is a very daunting situation or position to be in. Um, however, um, you just need to get started. And I, I would recommend, yeah, start small. Think bigger picture, but start small. Uh, pick an environment where you believe you can make some early inroads here. You can demonstrate why it's a good thing. I mentioned shared services before. That, that That's typically a good area to start with, uh, where you people are uh, interacting with those processes very frequently, people, people across the entire organization. So if you then have a process documented, you have to, you can show whatever the, whatever tool you're using, you can show the showcase the capabilities of the tools, the advantage of the tools, the knowledge capture of the tool, uh, how it makes sure that there are different people are executing the same process in the same way. So, so pick your areas, of only a few areas as a starting point uh, to, to show this proof of concept. Don't, don't aim too high. Don't, don't aim, oh, everybody has to do this now, but uh, let, let's start somewhere in an area where you are confident that it, it will work. It will, it will help to showcase uh, the capabilities and the advantages. Um, and many people are exposed to it. Um, definitely, don't go the path of mandating and that, that scares a lot of people away. And uh, it, it's very hard to manage if you mandate uh, a business process management model or that people have to document their processes. Um, it's more like document your core processes uh, and then grow from there and, and start with one area and say, yeah, let's start with your core processes because you have to draw a line somewhere because we, we schedule a meeting. That's a process, but do I document it? Maybe not. Uh, we are run a certain training session on a certain capability. Oh yeah, I want to document that because this responsibility might hand over to different people and I want to have the same way how this um, how this training is delivered to the organization. I want to have the same touch and feel whenever it happens. Uh, so don't mandate, but pick your battles. Um, what else can I say? Um, yeah, look for your advocates. Look for, for that's actually a very good thing for me to learn here. While it is a, a public uh, service environment, there are people who are coming at some point from the private sector. And I realized that those people have been exposed in their past careers more frequently, more likely to uh, one shape or form of a business process management model. So if you start talking to those people, they know what you're talking about and they will, they can be your advocates. So look for those people who basically have been there have tasted or, or or have this mindset, uh, know how good look likes so, and are interested in it. So, so look for those advocates for the, for those alliances. Uh, see what for their um, area of influence is, and then leverage this for your for your advantage. That's another thing uh, which is working well for us. Uh, we, we we can't like you said five thousand people. We can't do we can't be everywhere. But wherever we, where we have alliances, it's so much easier for us to create impact. Mm, mm, that's fantastic. That's great. I think bringing people along the journey and um, finding those ones that are um, already understand um, the value that BPM can bring and or, already have um, uh, have adopted that mindset already. I think that's um, a great place to start. Michael, I just want to um, thank you um, for sitting down with me today. Um, I've certainly been gleaning a lot and taking a lot of notes uh, from our conversation. I'm sure that our audience has been gleaning a lot um, from you as well. Um, and um, for those that are listening, um, if you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a rating and review. Uh, feel free to share it to anyone in your network that might be interested. Um, and Michael, if um, if there are any follow-up questions, if the audience wants to continue this conversation with you um, or glean from more of um, your knowledge how can they go about doing that i just contact uh, me on linkedin or on 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 this podcast here um i'm happy to have this conversation uh, that is always a learning both ways so so it always goes both ways so i'm happy to to have those conversations so to or be contacted that's fine 
Fantastic. Well, Michael, thanks again. Been an absolute pleasure. And for all of our listeners, I will see you in the next episode. Uh, for those people who are unwell, warm coffee is always a good solution to, to catch up on. Mm-hmm.